The relationship between mass media and our bodies has always been complicated. Sociologists and psychologists have known for decades that when we view media content, we often compare the ideal bodies they promote to ourselves. The ideals that the media broadcast are often adopted as our own, causing us dissatisfaction when our view of our actual self doesn't line up with these ideals. The rise of social media has changed how we interact with content. We swim in content soup. Data, messages and images pour into our feeds, the subtext of each new post containing standards that we compare to ourselves. Ofcom statistics report that 50% of children have a social media profile by the age of 12, as do 75% of 12 to 15 year olds. This research also showed that the majority of 12 to 15 year olds use highly visual social media, with 58% using Snapchat and 57% using Instagram. Last term, we carried out a survey questioning students specifically on their views of social media and body image. 62.8% of our respondents disagreed with the statement, social media has made me feel better about my body, and 81.4% agreed that seeing something on social media has made them want to change something about themselves. Therefore, our survey clearly shows that social media often has a negative impact on body image. The Museum of Man begs you to taxidermise yourself, to earn a place on their shelf. And how many times have I obeyed? How many times have I wanted to peel my skin off just to reveal a better, secret layer? How many times have I wanted to die just so that I could be brought back pretty? Or at least something so small nobody would see me? I think social media is showing us bodies that aren't real. And we are comparing ourselves to bodies that don't actually exist in the time of Photoshop and Facetune. And we're negatively comparing ourselves to an ideal body that doesn't doesn't even exist in real life. And it's so negative for your mindset because you're never going to look like that. And trying to kind of accept and understand and wrap your head around the idea that what you're seeing isn't real is impossible to do when you're just bombarded with images minute after minute, day after day. Most mental illness uh, emerges before the age of 25 and there's a bit of an epidemic of young people and mental health disorders. And recognising also that if people are vulnerable offline, they're likely to be vulnerable online as well. A lot of the early information that people typed in, uh, how can I help my body image or eating disorder issues, they might come across something that encourages them to, to diet, to lose weight. and in some cases how to effectively avoid uh, eating. Sometimes peer pressure can um, um, override people's common sense and understanding that something might be fake for instance and unhealthy to, to adopt but enough peer pressure, enough likes online then, then they can sometimes be influenced. There, are, there have been many reports that um, people who use online social media um, excessively um, tend to experience uh, mood effects, so impact on their mood, constant challenge comparing yourself against peers and keeping up with peers and uh, uh, needing to fit in can um, be associated with higher anxiety amongst young people as well. We had a preliminary session together just sort of um, sort of showering ideas that we wanted to talk about we, we sort of thought of the age group of sort of between 8 and 15 and the one that came up the most was body image and we thought well it would be a shame to not do that it's the most pressing subject right now when I think about sort of my younger relatives um they they were born with smartphones and all things like that and so the exposure that they have to everything else and everyone else's lives every single day is I think it's really toxic because they're constantly comparing themselves because they can see what everyone else is doing and why am I not doing the same thing? Why don't I look the same as that? Why don't I look better than I do? Instagram in particular is basically a, a highlight reel. Everyone's showing the best versions of themselves or at least a specific version of themselves. And when you're on Instagram and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and you're double tapping and all of this, you start mistaking that for reality. can see in Greek mythology the way uh, uh, gods were represented is really like ideal musculation like same for women there's always this thing of 
the beautiful stereotyp stereotypical woman and the beautiful stereotypical man that celebrities um, kind of per portray or like give out the self that you are, the self that you think that you are, uh, the self that other people like see you as or think uh, think you are. Um, <clears throat> and I think the question is, which self do you want to okay. portray? You are adding people on Facebook and they have only like 15 seconds to have a first idea of you on your Facebook page. The reason I've been exposed to one that promotes a healthy lifestyle is because I was part of sports teams and things like that which, where living healthily was promoted. But in other parts of social media, it's far more towards you should look this way because this way seen as a more attractive way even if it isn't necessarily the healthiest way to live so like especially for girls but also for guys to an extent but like you see idealized looks that isn't isn't the natural body shape for some girls but they'll still be told this is the best way to look regardless if it's what's best for them and it can compromise certain things such as their health you can see like sometimes like ads for men or uh, with like big bulky muscles and uh, you know you, you can see that all the time and it's just when you see that every day and you're like oh well I'm not like that and you're a bit like should I be like that and you just like question yourself over and over again. I've worn makeup almost every day since I was 11. It was sold to me under the guise of self-expression but it's only ever been self-oppression. Trying to scribble myself out to play it someone worth loving. They told me shackles meant freedom but there's no such thing as war paint if the war is on yourself. From our research, we've found three main theories which can explain the issue of body image in social media. The first is social comparison theory, which states that because we can't objectively assess ourselves, we compare ourselves to others, which online means comparing ourselves to an idealized image. The second is self-schema theory, which suggests that we explain other people's reactions to us based on how we see ourselves, which is related to how many likes and comments we get online. The final theory, self-discrepancy theory, argues that we become unhappy with a body image because we have different views of our actual selves and ideal selves, which we can't always achieve, which is exacerbated by social media. Our solution is to create an app called Selfmore. Our aim is to create a space where young people can go for all of the help they need when struggling with body image. The positive side is we know social media can be used to um, educate, to support people, provide resources, apps, tools that can really help them cope with uh, difficult emotions and with uh, uh, mental, mental health difficulties, emotional well-being difficulties, and making sure that we have the voice of people who've been through these experiences who can tell us what they found helpful and what they found harmful. In the past, campaigns attempting to help this issue have lacked a long-term solution and have fizzled out or lost focus. Self War hopes to combat this by creating a separate space far away from the noise of other social media sites. Instead of choosing to use other methods such as social media pages or hashtags which could run into the same issues as previous campaigns, or even trying to regulate social media as has been suggested by the UK Youth Parliament Committee, um, we found that the problem is more to do with how people use and relate to social media than the websites themselves. Our app will be divided into three clear sections. The first is Educate, which will teach users how and why social media affects body image, including new studies on the problem, theories and statistics to keep users informed. The second is Explore, where resources from previous campaigns can be accessed for tips on self-help, mindfulness and links to mental health services. And the third is Express, where users can share their own submissions based on their own experience with the issue. You can't reverse the effects that have already um, been made by social media but the best thing you can do is provide people with some, somewhere to go. Yeah. The way that we're using social media is changing all the time and hopefully the next change will be more honest and more organic.